my mechanic isn't telling me, hey, I actually got a, a t-ball game for my kid at 1030. Can I fit you in at 1230? He's just saying, no, I can't fit you in at 1030, but how about 1230? Oh, man, thanks so much for being here, guys. I am so excited about today because we're talking about one of my very favorite topics, which is taking control of your own schedule back. And this can be such a hard thing to really grasp over time in real estate. And how do these top producers do it? They've got a thousand deals in escrow and they're closing all this paperwork and sell. Somehow they're talking about lead generating every day. I don't get it. There's too much going on. I feel like a spaz and I'm running in a million different directions. I've also noticed that real estate is the number one place, by the way, for people with ADHD. Like we're all bouncing all over the place, a million miles a minute. And so we thought today it would be amazing. Bring one of our top leaders, JJ Velador on here. And he's bringing his friend, Shannon Alves, also a top producing agent, um, incredible agent with the Rockwell Real Estate Group um, out of Oregon. They're going to be talking to us about how do they control their time and how do they make sure that they are top producers year after year, making it happen, uh, despite all of the many demands, right? We got to go in a lot of directions. How do you make all that work? Uh, many of you already know, JJ, top producer, growth leader within the community, amazing coach and, and uh, businessman, and really, really proud and excited to have you on today. JJ, thanks so much for being here with us to talk about time. Man, Jeff, your intros, I tell you, uh, we need you at the Oscars, the Emmys, the Super Bowl. We need you as the That's master of ceremonies at every single event, right? So, so as you guys know, this is either going to be a refresher for you guys or a brand new course for some of you. Uh, I teach this class uh, about one time a year, and I think at the minimum, everybody should take this class once a year because they're such simple techniques, but we all know that when you break this business down to the basics, it can be a really simple business. And sometimes we overcomplicate things, especially with our time. And today I wanted to bring on uh, my guest host, which is Shannon. Uh, I've actually am extremely impressed at how she's tackled this business. And we bring Shannon on stage here. She came on board with our team. Rockwell group and just a shameless plug it's not my team it's Jake Rockwell's and just a shameless plug for him he, he built this incredible company out of 90,000 agents at our company we are the number 61 team and shout out to Jeff for that recognition post on Facebook yesterday we, we love that you recognize what kind of company this is built and a lot of this is through some of the simple techniques that we're going to go through today which is time management and leverage and with Shannon over the last eight months She's gone on an absolute tear. And let me just focus in even further into just this quarter alone. She's been able to close nine deals, just shy of $3 million in production. And uh, she currently has five. As I checked last week, it might be up to seven or eight now, but she currently has five deals under escrow. And she is also running another business with her training and she's also competing in horse racing and barrel racing and I'm sorry if I get the verbiage wrong because I'm not a part of that world Shannon so you got to cue us in but you know give us a little bit of background on who you are what your mindset is to bring some context to what we're going to talk about time management today and thank you for being on here with us at the community well thanks JJ um I uh I'm kind of in awe I will be just honest as I'm in awe. Um, I'm so I just started, I mean, so I'm just starting my third year in real estate. Um, I guess who I am is I've always been self-employed as an adult. I don't know what you want me to do. Is this what you want me to do, JJ? Just kind of yeah, tell just, who I am. Just give us who you are really quick and your crazy okay. life. So, so my crazy life is, uh, I have, five adult kids. I have 12 grandkids. I have been self-employed my whole adult life. I have had cattle ranches, hay ranches when I was in Eagle Point. Um, I have been a horse trainer for over 25 years, decided to do real estate. I still train my own. I compete at pro level barrel races. Um, I have an online coaching program for, uh, for horsemanship and barrel racing. Um, we have a trucking company. Uh, and so, yeah. And this is, 
not quite a motorhome because I have to drag him with me. He's one. Uh, so this is my living quarters horse trailer office. So, um, yeah, uh, that, that is that that is who I am. Um, so I, I just go for it. Um, there's a race today, and there's a big jackpot down here, and there's about three hundred, and then we raise money um, for some scholarships and stuff for doing another special race. Love it. So <laughs> you're all over the place, but on the surface, cool, calm, and collected because you've been owning in on this time management thing, right? And it's a it's a daily discipline. It's something, and Jeff, you want to go ahead and pull up the slides. We can go ahead and jump right into the presentation. But Shannon okay. is actually utilizing a lot of what we're going to be talking about today to create structure around her life. And as busy as she is, she still found a slot of time to be able to come and speak with us today, do a slight interview, mastermind. And this is an open course also. We're not saying that we have it figured out. I know for dang sure uh, i want to use another selective word but uh i know for dang sure that i don't I'll have this thing figured out shannon knows that she doesn't have it figured out and then everybody on this call has small tweaks that they add to their daily life that they're able to go ahead and implement to have a more structured day let me ask you guys this shannon when i talk about discipline equals freedom what comes to mind when we start talking about discipline equals freedom for you when we're talking about our daily uh, structure in business. Um, how that works for me is everybody's going to, like you said, tweak it for their own. Um, mine is a little different. I'm running multiple businesses um, and I, I do all this. That means that, okay, so to do this interview, I need, I didn't need to be down here to Red Bluff until noon. And so I got up earlier, start all my horses at home. Um, and so I left out of the house at five o'clock so that I could be down here a little bit after eight, take care of my horse, get my dog that always goes with me situated. And, and then I'm ready. So discipline, it just opens up your life. To me, it just opens up I mean, I was in Washington last weekend at a horse sale and I was still doing business, but I get up, I went for a run, I go through my stuff, have breakfast with my husband. He met me up there. Um, just, you, you just have to think about what you have to get done. It's just, you know. That's right. I, that's right. It's the little choices, right? So when we were talking yesterday yes. on this is a lot of people, the number one myth in everybody's life is that I don't have enough time. How many times, put it in the comments if you've heard that, <laughs> say, give me a thumbs up or, you know, Shannon, raise your hand if you heard someone say, I don't have oh, enough yeah. time for that, right? So 500 times, they say it all the time. 500 times. And you know what? As cliche as it is, everybody has the same 24 hours in a day right? It's what your priorities are, one, two, mm -hmm. and three, and then the discipline to make the small decisions daily that are going to lead you towards your goals. So for instance, I love to work out every single morning. I can tell you that I prefer to listen to music, loud music when I'm working out. It gets me more energized. It gets me more pumped up. I love the, the groove, the vibe it brings. I love to work out with music. That necessarily doesn't align with my business goals. That's entertainment for my mind. What am I trying to do in my business? What am I trying to learn about? Am I trying to get better in lead generation? Am I trying to build better relationships? Should I be attending a webinar or a class or some kind of podcast that's talking about relationship building? Should I be on the community center, shameless plug, the community center.com, investing my time listening to a class while I'm working out? Where can I find the discipline and the small time grooves to add and be more efficient in my daily life? Right. So for Shannon, she just took an eight hour drive up to Washington. And instead of listening to music and wanting to be entertained by the music, she was listening to a book. What book were you recently listening to on an audio book? Because how many of us say, I would like to read more, but I don't have, again, I don't have that elusive saying, I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. 
So actually, I went back through and I was re-listening to uh, Ninja Selling on my way up there, and I hit a bunch of different podcasts that I like. Um, some were some were real estate podcasts. Some were um, I have a running podcast I really like to listen to, um, and so they all kind of mesh together. Whether it's health and fitness, business, your your marriage, your relationship with your kids, it, it all meshes together. Um, and so you can bring everything together. Um, and like this morning coming down here, I listened to, um, uh, oh shoot, empowering, was it empowering women? She had a couple podcasts that were pretty cool. So I listened to some of those. Um, yeah, so I, 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 that's what I do. Love it. Love it. So let me pull up a couple of slides and we're going to jump right into this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have them available for us, um, Jeff, but there we go. So time equals money, right? How to match your earnings by optimizing your time. We gave you a short intro on that. And obviously, um, one of my favorite quotes in life is going to be time management. E uh, time management is life management. And Shannon already alluded to that is, is you're actually going to squeeze more out of life by managing your time. I get it, everybody. We, mm -hmm. I used to be that person that said, I don't want to live off of a calendar. How many of you guys got into real estate to make, to have flexibility in your time? Go well, put it in the chat box, thumbs up, hands up. Everybody got into real estate to either have more time or more money, or you like to help people, but ultimately you wanted more time or more money. And then you got into real estate and realized, shoot, I have a little bit less money and a little bit less time. What's going on here? And the two go hand in hand. But furthermore, what do you guys think that haven't been on my class before? Furthermore, what do you think is more valuable than your time? Open up your mic if you know the answer. Tick, 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 tick. Go ahead and give me the next slide, Jeb. So Liz said your health. I love that your, answer, Liz. But your choices. What was that? Your choices. Your choices. Another great answer. I love that. But attention. Your attention is more important than your time. How many of you have been sitting with a significant other or your kids or a work colleague and you are there, but you are not where your feet are? Your mind is somewhere else thinking about something else. So your attention is what's really going to be the game changer for a lot of us. And this isn't, you know, some kind of ancient Egyptian secret. This is the basics, guys. We know that people want us to listen to their needs, especially when we're on listing appointments, when we're on buyer appointments, when we're training, when we're on a call like this. We need to be paying attention so that we can grasp the concepts that are going to help us move forward towards our goals, right? And if it's in a listing appointment, we need to be paying attention. They have our time about an hour there, right, at the listing appointment or 30 minutes, whatever you like to prefer to do. But are you there just to give them your spiel of how great you are and that you sold 500 homes last year and that you're the best thing since sliced bread and you're the number one real estate agent? Or are you there because you have two ears and one mouth and you're there to listen and pay attention? What's gonna serve you better? And what's gonna serve you better in your goals is giving maximum attention. So that alone is the biggest secret in this industry is paying attention. Let's go ahead and take it to the next slide. As I already talked about, discipline equals freedom. So the little choices that we do in our day, from the moment we wake up, what's the first choice that you have when that alarm clock goes off? Get up. You said Don't get up. Others snooze. might have said hit do the snooze button. Do not hit snooze. No, Don't hit do snooze, not. right? And no. what happens when you get up early and you attack the day and you feel great when you get a workout in or whatever the case is, your meditation, your daily walk, five minutes of business planning. For those of you who have kids, you know by 6.30 or 7 o'clock when those kids are up, your day is over. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have any more personal time. You got to get up. Discipline equals freedom. Even having a 30 minute window of waking up earlier in, in your day in this business is going to serve you hundreds and hundreds of more hours. And I promise you that just by being a little bit more disciplined in the morning. Go ahead and give me my next slide there, Jeff. 
So this is a reminder that the sacrifices you make today for the sake of discipline will pay off in the long run by giving you the greater freedom and control of your life. Next, next slide, Jeff. So what are a couple things that we can do, Shannon, when we're setting rules, routines, and sticking to them consistently? What are some rules and routines in your life that is helping you maximize your time? So what I do is I set an alarm. I'm up between 3.30 and 4.30 in the morning. Um, and when I step out of bed, I turn off the alarm and I walk downstairs, period. Um, the other thing is, is I don't watch TV. I, I mean, yes, the news is on sometimes and I turn it on when I go to bed at night. But don't ask me what's on Netflix. Don't ask me what is, you know, the greatest thing on whatever is going on. I, I don't watch it. I mean, I, yes. Will I sit down with my grandkids and watch a movie? Absolutely. Um, just, I guess you just have to to pick your priorities. Pick, you know, just because Sally Ann says, you know, okay, yes, I rodeo for, you know, part of my living. Have I ever watched Yellowstone? No, not one single episode. So it's not important to me. So I go after what's important to me. I love that. And, and anybody else that wants to share some of their rules or routines that help them maximize their time, uh, feel free to raise your hand and Jeff can, can bring you on stage. Again, this is a collaborative class. And like I said, I don't have it figured out. Shannon doesn't have it figured out, but we can all learn from each other. So go ahead and raise your hands if you have any rules or routines and how you stick to them consistently. I will tell you this. Um, I, I believe that Jeff is the one that uh, shared this with me, but I know one of my mentors shared this with me. He said, we all have routines. Some have good routines, some have bad routines, but everybody has a daily routine. And that routine is going to lead you to, again, maximizing your time. So if your routine is wake up at seven and let the chaos begin and get the kids dressed. I, I speak a lot about kids because that's my daily life, right? I got my, my kids, my wife and uh, my business and everything I'm running. But if your routine is wake up at seven, you're behind the eight ball. Hey, you're eating school lunch today. Just throw on a, a sweater over your PJs and let's get out the door. How well do you think you show up for others when you're running behind the eight ball like that? You That's don't. Routine, guys. You don't, right? Yeah, yeah you, they don't. They don't. I, and, and how are you teaching your kid? I, I mean, everything I did was I was... I was trying to show my kids now I try to show my grandkids you know why things matter what why things are important oh I love that why why are we doing this I love that Casey has a uh, her hand raised tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are on this you know I've worked a lot of my career in medical uh, offices and yeah Google Calendar keeps my day straight but I like to have a checklist it evolves from the moment I wake up to the end of the day it can have things as simple as reminding myself to pick that thing up at the grocery store. But if I don't have this checklist, mm -hmm. I'm not actively checking off everything I do. I feel pretty discouraged by the end of the day of like, what kept me from completing such simple tasks. So I get a lot of gratification off checking things off. But every day that list is something new. Let me tell you, like asking my husband for a guitar yesterday checked it off and now that guitar is sold out and my husband is such a badass and supports me and he said for how hard you're working check that off and this morning that guitar was sold out so I just feel really special staying on that. task that's all I love it I love it well, yeah. way to go. we'll mm -hmm. rock out Ray what are what's on your mind hey uh yeah so just a little tip thing that I, I kind of have lived by since before I became a realtor was um, a three-part day. So when I when I was younger, I used to work at Kirby Vacuums and I got the opportunity to actually have lunch, dinner um, with Robert Kiyosaki. And before he made Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he said, Ray, there's a reason why there's a, lunch, a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a three-part day. Because at those times, you're rejuvenating your body's need for energy. So if you can break your schedule down into a three-part day, 
whether that be a 15, 30 minute or even an hour, you know, you're able to rejuvenate your focus and your drive and your energy. So that's kind of the things that I do. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. So uh, Ed Milet, if anybody has picked up his latest book, he talks about having the three part day as well in that book and manipulating time. We all agree on that there's 24 hours in a day, but he says he manipulates his three part day into having three business days while everybody else is having one business day. He's breaking up. Hey, from 8 to 12, that's one business day. From 12 to, to 4, that's another business day. And from 4 to 7, that's another business day. And he says he's maximizing that three-part day, just as you were exp uh, expressing with Robert Kiyosaki. And it's so true that if you can hammer out um, something that I forgot to mention that I mentioned in my last training was how many of you have gone into vacation mode? You just, you have your plane tickets, you know you're leaving tomorrow to, to take a trip and you have the same amount of time, but how much juice do you squeeze out of those eight hours or even four hours knowing that you're going to be gone tomorrow? That is the manipulation of time. It's the same amount of hours in the day, but you know that tomorrow you're checking out. So you might have a list of a hundred things. And instead of leaving 25 or 50 over for the next day, you're going to attack that hundred list item like there is no tomorrow because you know that the significant other is going to be on your rear end if you're taking those calls on vacation. I still take them while on vacation, but still, the matter of the fact is you know that you need to get stuff done. That's time manipulation as well. Jeff, if you'll take me on to the next slide, there's something that I want to talk about with how do we begin to apply this into our productive work week. So when we look at this graphic on the screen, on the left side, Shannon, we have our productive people. And on the right side, we have our busy people. On the left side, productive people measure the quality of their output. And on the right side, people measure the input of their time. So what are your thoughts when we start discussing just showing up to say we showed up and we're there, we punched the clock versus no, I'm showing up and I'm going to be productive in my day. I'm not going to just say I work an 80 hour work week to say I work an 80 hour work week. I'm actually going to show up and produce. What's your thoughts when we bring this conversation to the table? I guess we all get, and and maybe I say this because I, I went through this just a little while ago and really bad last summer, is we get a little overwhelmed and then we stop with some of our good routines and we fall into like just chaos. It's the phone's ringing nonstop. You got people here. You're trying to do, you're not writing stuff down. And you, you literally are just, for me, what happens is, is my throat starts shutting down and I'm like, okay, I'm starting to stress out. I'm stressing out. And then my house isn't clean. My horses aren't getting rode. My clients aren't taken care of. My desk is a mess. And then you go. So I'm showing up. I'm not productive. Everything's getting the short end of the stick. Um, so I have a saying that, and it goes into real estate. It goes into, I mean, life. So, so showing up is, you know, I raised five kids, so, you know, the kitchen is always a mess, but you, now, yeah, I have my grandkids over there and everything. And so then my kind of how I think of things is we show up, it's kind of like walking into you know, a kitchen and you're trying to cook dinner and the kitchen's still dirty. Being productive is that kitchen's clean. Every time you, you dirty a dish or you, or you make a little meal, you, you clean it and it's done and you're ready to go again. You're not overwhelmed. You could always walk in there and, and start something. I get overwhelmed. I can't take on a big task. So what I do is I break things into little tasks and I'm you know, I'll, I'll just be like, okay, how, what am I going to do? And I'll take out my thing and I'll go 15 minutes, 15 minutes at my desk. Well, usually it turns into longer than that. And then I go, oh, you know what? I'm going to clean up this room, one room at a time, not because all of us women and pro a lot of men that help is you go from this room to this room, to this room, to this room, this room, and you just, you don't get anything done. 
15 minutes in this room. You know what? It's clean. And, and you're like, oh. And it gives you power. It gives you calm and it gives you peace and it gives you power. I love that. I love that. You know what? That brings me into what I want to talk about when we bring <laughs> that into our work day also is, yeah. Jeff, uh, feel free to open up your mic and, and, and I'll tag you in on this conversation because a lot of you guys know Jeff as the uh, the you know the guy that's hosting the community zooms and masterminding and coaching and doing all these beautiful things out in Puerto Rico. He has the slogan "Love Your Life." But if you guys didn't know Jeff, he actually ran a huge team and a uh, a very productive team up in Salem, Oregon, before he got to the financial freedom bracket or the uh, Robert Kiyosaki's quadrants, right? Jeff, what did you teach your people or yourself when we're working in the business and working on the business and how we can be productive before we get busy? What are we doing the first three, four hours of our day before we go ahead and just let, you know, the cap go to where we're going to go into busy work? Well, lead generating is the answer to that question, but um, I, and also planning the work. You know, I think that there's this concept of, of moving from a chaotic concept of, I have so much to get done to even what Shannon was talking about, which is structuring your approach, understanding what needs to come next, creating a plan and then executing on the plan, which doesn't have to take a ton of time. And then if you want to work 80 no. hours, your 80 hours are worth 800 hours of the next person's time because in their chaotic spas mode, they're, they're losing so much time between micro task achievement, right? And the, there's a great book that came out by Mihai Chinsik Mahai, which is a crazy name. Um, I'll put it here in the chat in a minute, but called Flow. It's in English, by the way, the book, um, but it's called Flow and it's about getting into flow. And really what he talks about is, is you have to settle into a zone of productivity. And that zone is super important if you really want to achieve anything at a high level. Doesn't matter what you're trying. If you're a barrel racer, that's incredible. You need to be in flow. You can't be scattered and do barrel racing or you're going to... You're going to look different after that barrel race is my guess. And you'd be missing some of your face. Um, so this is, this is so critically important. And I think there's a confusion between productivity and busyness. And I hear agents a lot of times brag. And by the way, never pat yourself on the back for being busy. Who cares? I don't care that you're busy. Nobody does. People care about results in this world. And it's all your bank account cares about. I promise that productivity is what drives results. So you have to focus on what creates income in your business and income and outcomes. And that's on the business and in the business, vice versa, I guess. Um, and those two things are all that matter. And if you find yourself getting you know, sucked up into stuff that really doesn't matter in your business, there's probably an opportunity for leverage or at least reprioritization of your time. And by the way, you guys are killing it. So I'm going to get out of the way because I'm loving this. We love this. We love it. So you guys, this is, this is a skill set, right? Time management is definitely a skill set and there's tips that can help us uh, become better, but it's also a, a skill set that can diminish if you're not paying attention. How many of you guys, so there's a, there's a, a quote that I read the other day. I, I can't remember the book, um, but he says, Rome wasn't built in a day, but also it didn't destruct in one day either. So you're either building or destructing. And some of you guys have done the, you know, the program or, or the, the, um, the mental discipline program of uh, Andy Frisella, which is the 75 hard. And how did you feel when you first did that program and you got through it and you found all this time and discipline in your life and you felt great. And then it's been two years now and you're like, holy cow, I, I, I let myself go and I now my life is kind of falling apart again because it's something that you build up to, but you have to consistently keep putting small deposits into this time management practice or else, again, Rome wasn't built in a day, but it also didn't dissipate in a day. You look back in the rearview mirror and like, holy cow, I really let this discipline go. So it's something that I'm going to reshare some of the tips that helped me that I like to revisit every single year. And at a minimum, I try to get into it six, every six months. But Jeff, go ahead and pull up the slides. 
And these are some of the powerful tips that can help you manipulate time to have a much more productive work week or work year and to help you manipulate time in your favor. So the first one, tip number one from chaos to control, the power of using a calendar. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you are currently using a calendar. Mm -hmm. Give me a sad face if you hate calendars, <laughs> because I know <laughs> there's a lot of you out there like me that do not I like use it. I use it. <laughs> I have one on my desk and I take notes on it from the title company when they call me, <laughs> right? So listen, you guys. See? <laughs> Discipline equals freedom, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about calendars to organize. A calendar is going to help you keep schedule and plan of your day in advance. You can set reminders, important dates, deadlines, and allocate time for specific tasks and activities from the Weber's dictionary there. You guys know what a calendar does. Listen, the day I started using the calendar was when I missed one. All it took was one, you guys. What do you guys think I missed? that caused me to use the calendar like my life depended on it. I talk a lot about them. What do you guys think I missed? Put it in the chat bar or open up your mic. Hmm. No, okay. anniversary, Joanne. Or, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. If I missed the anniversary, I think I'd be okay still. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see there, Liz, a lot of you guys are putting business, 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 closing, showings. And Eric said it in the background here. I have Eric with me. And he said, kids, for me, one basketball game. That's all it took. I prioritize my kids. I grew up without with looking into the stands. And guess what? I didn't see my people there supporting me, my dad my mom, my brothers. I would look up in the stands, I would make a basket, a goal, whatever the case was, make a good play. I looked up, I saw people cheering, but they weren't the people that were there to watch me, right? That's all it took, you guys. And what? why do you think I missed it? Because I had a, an important listing appointment that I had to go to, and guess whose fault that was? Why? Because I have control of my calendar. When I'm on the phone with a prospect and they need to set up a listing appointment, when you call your doctor, when you call your lawyer, when you call anybody that is offering you a service, a plumber, electrician, a roofer, what do they tell you? I have X and X date available from this time to this time. And what do you do? You fill their calendar. They don't say what time works for you if they're running a great business because now they're reacting to their time, to your time versus them reacting to our time. One of my mentors said, I don't care if it's your kids, uh, games, anniversary, birthdays, engagement, whatever it is on the personal side, it's an appointment. Mm -hmm. If a client asks you, hey, do you have 1230 on Saturday available and you have a kid's basketball game? I'm sorry, I'm already booked from 1230 to 2. I have an appointment then. I can do 5 o'clock. How's that work for you? If not, we can do it a little earlier at 8 o'clock. Which one works best for you? I promise you, if you start getting in the habit of slotting times, people are going to mold to your schedule. And you won't lose clients and you're going to show up that much more professional throughout the week. So as we get into the tips of using our calendars, I've shared a little bit of my story and why I started using a calendar and how it helps me. Shannon, what are your thoughts on using a calendar? So I, I love my calendar. Um, I didn't use the calendar for a long time before I was a realtor. I mean, I, and this all has to come in because it took me. I mean, it's kind of, you know, I, I'm, I'm in my mid fifties. So yeah, it took me a long time, but I started using a calendar when I was giving so many lessons, uh, and I had to keep everybody. I use my calendar now and it, it's everything. And it's literally, you know, if, if I want to go to CrossFit or it's, it's in my calendar, I even schedule times when I'm working my horses, um, because that's otherwise they'll, they'll get run over. Um, 
you know, just when I mean run over by, they'll just get shoved out. Mm -hmm. And so I think keeping everything on a schedule helps you have that control. Um, I don't know where this little tip comes in, but I keep thinking about it because it's something that I told uh, another guy that that's over here in Klamath um, is, and he has kids and stuff too. Like you, you know, we're always talking about kids. I'm, I have an empty nest, but, but I think you can take so much time and take it back. It is, and this may not, everybody may go, this doesn't make sense, but don't eat standing in the kitchen. Don't eat sitting watching the TV. If you sit, if you got your kids, granted, if you're going 15 different directions, and everybody's got to grab something because they're going to a basketball game. That's different. But I raised my kids and we sat at the table for every single meal. I mean, now granted, if, if it was a rodeo weekend and we were all going, yeah, you know, the cooler went out the thing. But, but, and you know, it's funny because my grandkids and my kids come over and they, we come, whether you're just having a snack, sit at the table, put your phone down, give yourself just five minutes, eat, visit with whoever you're sitting with, and then pick your phone back up. I promise that little tiny bit of just decompression, no phones, sit down, eat. First of all, you won't eat as much because you'll actually eat and focus on what you're doing but it, it just it just goes on to everything and just d don't multitask so much don't you know be be present be there and even if it's just by yourself my husband and I both do it we'll be home by ourselves I mean he's gone a lot because he's truck driver and uh I sit at the table eat my food and I'm not on the phone and I think that's you know just I think those are just lot, lots of little things. And these are just weird little things that have worked for me. And so I know we're talking about are, calendars. These, these are things but, that are giving you mental clarity throughout your day, right? Yeah. And so then, granted, okay, do I have my calendar there and go, oh, what was that? I'll, I'll grab my calendar and go, oh, okay. After I get done eating lunch, I'll do that. Um, just. It, it all these things work together, and so keeping your day focused and and kind of uh, it, it, you'll get way more done, way more done, and you won't feel so overwhelmed. That's right. That's right. So, and in the comments, I I saw uh, Joanne when you said, and I I agree with you on this premise. If you lose a client because you prioritize your kids, you're dodging and explicit. <laughs> client that's okay um, be thankful for that so two trains yeah. of thoughts that i have on that yes i agree with you on the premise but also on the back side of us taking responsibility and action for our planning mm -hmm. when we call our and people always tell me you're not a doctor and you're not a lawyer and you're not this but i'm a professional so when yeah. i call my professionals that are going to service me for whatever service i'm looking at my mechanic isn't telling me, hey, I actually got a, a t-ball game for my kid at 1030. Can I fit you in at 1230? He's just saying, no, I can't fit you in at 1030. But how about 1230? Yeah. So I think us as realtors, because we do personalize our business so much, we sometimes give too much information on our personal side when we're booking appointments. And that's the only thing about this premise about calendars that I'm talking about is just yes. time slotting as a business and not time slotting as personal. Keep personal, personal. Now, if you're catching up for coffee or something, you know, that's you're different. Yeah, yeah, you're calling your clients for hey, mm -hmm. we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't chatted in a while. I'd love to take you out for coffee, or what are you doing this weekend? I'd love to invite you to this wedding my daughter's having, or whatever the case is. And it's more of a personal conversation, uh, and and you're inviting, and they say, oh, I can't, I can't make it a coffee this uh, this weekend. Sorry, can you do something else? And you say, oh no, I actually got the kids this weekend, or whatever the case is, right? Yeah. If if it goes more into a personal space, then yes, I would let it flow into a personal space. But when you're in a business setting and you're talking about listing a home or buying a home, I would keep it in the context of business. Is what uh, I was alluding to there. We don't owe them an explanation. We don't have to defend ourselves. 
we we don't owe them i mean if the time slot doesn't work we don't owe them an exclamation of exactly what we have going on like you're saying is well so we so we do up. not have to defend ourselves yeah pull up the slides jeff i want to run through a few more of these and on that shannon it's, it's less so of the defense factor but but what we do owe them is professionalism right that's what we do owe them yes and, and that's the part of absolutely that I, I want to be absolutely on this is owing the client a professional service when we're booking on our calendars yes. i have a few tips that are going to help us with this that we'll run through quickly because i want to make sure that we're on time right so reverse yes. engineer your year month date uh, um, month reverse engineer your year your month your week your days your hours and yes even your minutes if you're if you're at all able to so take me on to the next one you know that may sound a little uh, uh, a little more on the psychopath things but I promise you the more discipline you can get with your calendar the more freedom you're going to get to either say yes or no to certain events so how many of you guys believe you have 365 days a year to work nobody right nobody believes that we have 365 years uh, uh, 365 days a year to work but why when we go set up our goals for the year do we say this year i'm going to go uh you know make a hundred thousand dollars in in the year and we adjust to 365 days but the reality is if you sit down every December or January 1st and you sit down and you say, okay, for this year, what do I have coming up? You sit down with your significant other, yourself, first yourself, and you plan out everything that you have for the year. Graduations, birthdays, uh, anniversaries. Uh, what else What else can you have in a personal, personal side of things that you could put on, on a yearly event? Give me some ideas in, in the chat box that we may forget. Family events. Family events, co-worker, uh, uh, your spouse, significant other, if they have some kind of event that you have to attend for, for their workspace. Family trips, you know, all of these things that can go into our yearly event. Now we have the mold of our year ready to go and we can count down, oh, we actually have Instead of 365 days, we only actually have 320 days. We're going to knock off 40, right? People, if you treat your business like a business, you're going to have real results. And mm -hmm. anywhere else that they have a 401k, they also have this cool thing called PTO. <laughs> this is your PTO, all right? This is your pay time off because you're being accountable to it for the year. Now, Jeff, take me to my next slide. Oh, yes. Uh, Joanne, I, I was talking about changes in appointment because kids in the ER. Yeah, exactly. No, sorry. Bye. <laughs> if, I, if my kid is sick and I, and I have to cancel an appointment and they get mad about it, yeah, I agree with you. I'm not working with that client. So totally get you on that. So our monthly outlook, right? Once we got our, our business plan for the year, what is our monthly outlook? How many of you planned out for the month of April? What were your goals for the month? How many prospecting hours were you going to hit in April? How many listings were you going to take in April? How many buyers were you going to take in April? How much education or training were you going to be accountable for in April? Marketing, content creation. How many of you have your content creation calendar for April? Coffee, lunches, dinner appointments, networking. This is your monthly outlook. How many of those can you fit into your calendar or at least be accountable to? If you say, I'm going to take four listings this month, you at least have it right there on the top of your calendar and then you're being accountable to it for your month. Next slide. Your, your Sundays are for battle prep. This is where we break down our week. Who, what, when, where, how. How. In person, over Zoom. That goes along with where, right? When, the day, the time. What is the meeting about? And who are we meeting with this week? Next slide. Your daily review with coffee. 
this is the part where I believe Shannon excels with the best because she knows what she's preparing with in the morning. She may do it with coffee, with tea, with water. I don't know. Tell us about it, Shannon. What are you doing every morning when you have your power list? What is your preparation for the day? Coffee, my favorite. That's right, mine as well. Uh, pretty much mine's a, usually, if it's not a pre-workout drink, it's a, a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. So, but a lot of times I'll go through stuff as I'm running and stuff. So, uh, I just go through it on my head and stuff, but yeah, but my, my, I, I don't really have a certain drink I use. So in the morning, I'll tell you this, and maybe this is something that you can implement, Shannon. In the morning, every single morning, I do this exercise. It's called my hit list. What are the three things I got to get done this week uh -huh. or, or this today? What are the three things I got to get done no matter what? I don't care if a boulder falls on my back and I break my back and I'm on the hospital bed. I got to get these three things done. Someone's going to help oh, me do yeah. it or I'm going to get it done myself. I have three things every morning yeah it's three non-negotiables non-negotiables and then on top of that that's what people. i call five people who are the five people i got to get a hold of today that are make a list call a list non-negotiables they got five people i got to contact everybody has five mm -hmm. people they got to contact in their day write them down check them off at the end of the night give me my next slide jeff por favor Then your nightly review. Did you win today or did you lose today? And guess what? Next slide, Jeff. If you have enough wins throughout your day and you have enough wins throughout your week and you have enough wins throughout your month and you win enough years, then you're winning that life, baby. It's that easy, right? If we collect more wins mm -hmm. on the scoreboard, then we're winning and we're making towards making progress towards our goals and if we aren't making progress to our goals we either have two things we can either adjust our actions or we can adjust our goals and it's okay to do both maybe sometimes you decide that you need to take a different direction in life but this isn't only time management for realtors this is time management for life this can apply anywhere in any space and in any industry so I know Shannon wanted to tackle the Pomodoro technique, AKA the jam sessions. Go ahead and give me the next slide, Jeff. And then Shannon, <laughs> go ahead and rip on what you do with Pomodoro. Don't worry about reading the slide. They can read it. What are your thoughts on this? So it's awesome. I don't do it exactly how I, I just molded it to work for me and, and to work for that day. Um, so sometimes I'll just, I'll just go, you know what? I got 15 minutes. I'm going to send out, uh, 10 video text messages. Um, and so that's how I do it, is I'll put my phone down. I'll put it in the other room, turn it off and I'll text my husband and say, Hey, I put my phone down for a little while, but I use this in everything, whether it's business I mean, all my businesses, whether it's the fitness, it's the coaching is you will get more done in just a tiny bit of time and then you just move on. Um, and it and, and I mean, and sometimes I, I can't go. I, I'm like, well, I, I, I can't give 45 minutes. I can give 20 minutes. And and if it goes farther, then great. Um, but I can give that 20. 20 minutes and I'll set a timer on my phone in the other room and I won't pay attention to anything, but what I'm working on while that in that 20 minutes and you, you get so much more done and it just, I don't know, for me, it just is, gives me clarity and, um, you know, but, but that goes along with everything, you know, I mean, yeah, sometimes you'll, you'll kind of go across, but Man, just do it. I promise it'll work. Shannon, can it, I ask you a work. question on that? Because I, first off, I love sure. this technique. And JJ, I love that you're bringing it uh, to light for folks here because I know how powerful it's been for you to create your your level of production. And, um, and Shannon, obviously for you as well. Shannon, you just said during that period of time, I don't focus on anything else. 
and I think we live in a we live in a culture of disruption, right? We have all have disruption devices mm -hmm. near us somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Where they go, Bleh! and then suddenly you're off the thing that you're yep. on, and you're on something else. What are the techniques or strategies that you use, particularly? to minimize disruption from other places, because it's so easy, especially for people who kind of have brains that ping pong a lot, to get lost now in something else. And they were, oh. at, with every intention, right? Oh. They wanted to do the right thing, yeah. and now they're on a million things. Did we lose you? I think we just lost Shannon. We may Perfect lost, timing. We may have lost her. Uh, no, absolutely, Jeff. The other thing that I love to combine with this, though, as well, is what is, what is more powerful than focus time is accountability on that focus time, right? So if you pull Love up it. my slides yeah. on the next one, it just states that the focus time. So I don't think he's on the call today, but a lot of you guys know one of the leaders within the community, uh, Jason Giles, he and I are really focused on the attraction side of the business and recruiting and building um, with other realtors out in the, in the nation, right? Well, guess what? When we show up at 6.15 in the morning, every single morning, we have accountability to that jam session. It's a 30 minute recruiting window of making phone calls. And sometimes we very, very, um, it's not very often that we get off subject, but when we do catch ourselves, we say, Hey dude, make the next call, make the next call, make the next call. And I don't know if Scott is still on the call, but Scott and I, when we used to work at Cobalt Banker together, we would have these uh, 50 minute jam sessions where he would put on his phone calls and I would, uh, or headphones and I would get on the phone calls and I made a hundred thousand cold calls in my first year in real estate. And then with his, in combination with his marketing and what I was doing on the cold call inside, um, it was something ridiculous of about 50 listings in eight months that we took together. And that was just once a day or maybe twice a day and, and a, uh, six hour work day that we would say, Hey, two, two jam sessions. Because Scott and I can talk for, you know, days and days and days about just anything about uh, hiking and working now and uh, just the, the golden years of, of what I used to do in high school and what you did in college. Right? All these. So we get off track and you can easily lose all this time. But these jam sessions pull you back into into context. And if you have accountability with someone that's strong minded and strong will and I say, hey, Shannon, we're going to go attack this project. If you get off course, I'm going to call you out. If I get off course, you're going to call me out. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be much more powerful than trying to do the jam session on your own because left with your own devices, you probably lose control. I'm sure of it. Some of us will. So Shannon, yeah, since we've got I, you back, I want to hear your answer. Yeah. What are you doing to minimize all those distractions uh, at, from the perimeter? You know what I mean? How do you, how do you keep all the velociraptors out of the paddock? Uh, I put, I put my phone in the other room. <laughs> I, period. I put my phone in the other room, whether whether I'm, or I leave it in the pickup or I put it, whatever I'm focusing on for that time, I'll put my phone away. Um, you know, and, and I'll do that. And then, you know, the only person that I really, you know, that, you know, kind of worries about me if I don't answer my phone is my husband. And so I text him, Hey, I'm working. And so, you know, um, I my put my phone in the other room. I'll text you as soon as I'm done. Uh, you know, or I'm riding this horse, I'll text you as soon as I'm done riding this horse. But you, you have to, you can't jump every time it dings. I mean, yeah, every once in a while, I get in that slump, and I do that. And then all of a sudden, I have to kick myself in the ass and go knock it off and not jump every time it dings. That's right. That's right. You know, uh, it's funny that you bring that up, and that's why I love having a, a mastermind uh, call in this kind of session because it it, it reminds me of certain rules and um, systems that I've put into place with my own life as well that I think is just common sense at this point. But I, I it brings yeah. me to share this with you guys is one of my rules and systems with my wife is I should call it more of a system, not a rule, right? Because if she's on a call, I'm probably going to be sleeping on the couch. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of my systems is that when I was early on in, in the business and we're, uh, you know, in the, in the golden years and sweetheart years of, 
Uh, anytime she texts me, I'm texting her. Anytime uh, she calls me, I'm calling. Like it was like boom, 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 baby, I love you, right? And what we had to implement early on when I'm in appointments or when I'm in a coaching session or when I'm on whatever I'm doing, when it if if it's one ring, it's probably hey, I just want to chat. And what's what's up with your day? If it's two rings back to back, it's an emergency. So if I'm on a focused session of doing something and I see her call coming in and I'm in a jam session and I'm focused and it's one call and it goes to voicemail, I'll get to the voicemail when, when I'm out of my session. If I'm in a jam session and I see that phone ring twice, which it hasn't happened in, t in 10, 11 years, then, I'm, then I'm, I'm good to continue doing what I'm doing, right? So that's just a small system that you guys, even with your kids, come in, implement. Uh, my kids are still young where they're not calling me every 10 minutes telling me they lost this or where's this or where's that, but I'm sure it's coming in the 13, 14, 15 year olds, right? They're, they're always ringing you off the hook. <clears throat> you can implement that with your kids. Anybody that's usually knocking you off track of your jam sessions, let them know, hey, if you call me once, leave me a voicemail. And if I'm busy, I'll get back to you. But if you call me twice back to back, it's an absolute emergency. An absolute emergency means like you're going to the hospital, not that you forgot your basketball shoes. Can I bring them to you after after work? Right. Yeah. So small systems and everybody likes to. Yesterday, I talked with the team about systems as well. Systems don't always have to be something on our computer with an operating system that is running some kind of CRM and multiple dings and alerts. Something as small as that can be a system. And give them a special ring. My husband has his ring. So like if I'm busy, he may text something to me that, that, you know, so he doesn't forget it or something. <clears throat> but if he calls me, he has a special ring. So I know it's not just, you know, Tom, Dick or Harry calling it. It's there's something going on because he must have already texted me. Now he's calling. There's something I need to answer it. So give him a special ring. And then every time the phone rings, you're not going, Oh, I, I need to make sure that's that's how I do it. He has his own ring. That's right. I love it. I love it. Okay, a couple more slides on here. So accountability jam sessions. I spoke about that for a second, and then be fully engaged with the task in front of you guys. It, it gets as easy as that. Make it regular and meaningful progress to boost your productivity. And I promise you, if you took nothing from this call except for that mm -hmm. of being very targeted with your time, try it this week. I encourage you to try it this week. Choose three days this week where you're going to give a 50 minute or a 25 minute targeted approach to, to get a task done or a project that you've been putting off. Go do it with this week and then share your results on social media. Text me 541-414-9378. Just use it to your advantage. And I promise you, the more you use that, one tip, you're going to see uh, growth and progress in whatever area that you're trying to grow in. Uh, Jeff, go ahead and give me the next slide. The Eisenhower Matrix. This was coined by uh, President Eisenhower. And if it's good enough for a president to use, I'm pretty sure that it's good enough for us to use in our days. I'm sure that he's leveraging time and doing all these tasks as well. So what is the Eisenhower metric Matrix? Take me to the next slide here, Jeff. Uh, John, John Sellers isn't on the call with us, but he's really good at breaking down this Eisenhower uh, matrix and, and he uses it a lot in his life. He says that if an agent calls him, usually they're trying to put you in the bracket of it's, uh, it's probably important but not urgent so you can schedule it. Right. So you have these four quadrants where everybody's always after your time. And if you can put these quadrants into your calendar, you're going to be much more useful of that time. So if you are in a position where you're the one and, and leverage isn't a bad word. Um, a lot of people think leverage is a bad word, whether you're the one being leveraged or leveraging others. It's just a word that helps us get towards a goal faster as a team. Right. So when you're the one being leveraged, you have four quadrants of is this urgent on the top left and important? You got to do it. Urgent and important, you got to knock it out right away. On the top right, is it not urgent and important? So it's not urgent, urgent, but it is important that we get to it. We're going to schedule it. We're going to work on it and we're going to break it down. On the bottom right, it's not urgent, not important. We're going to delete it, get it off our list. And then on the bottom left, 
And left side, we have the urgent, not important. We're going to delegate that and leverage it out. So it's urgent, but it's not too important where we can actually give that to someone else to run with it so that they can knock it out for us, right? So there's a million tasks we could do be working on real estate, but which one should you work on? So go ahead and take me on the next slide, Jeff. I think I, I noted some of these. Yep. So how do we implement this in our business? Top left, urgent and important. Things you should do, showings, writing, negotiating offers, and working with active clients. Would you guys all agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right, not urgent, important, schedule these, work here. This is where you should be working where they're not urgent, but they are important. Following up with clients, asking for referrals, updating your database, posting and engaging on social media, and then self-care, working out, taking some time to, to, to yourself in your daily life, whether it's you know working with the horses or uh, working out, reading a book, take some time to schedule for your own headspace. Bottom left, not important and urgent, you're gonna delegate these. So adding or removing signs, marketing, attending uh, most home inspections, getting contracts to other parties, showings to unqualified buyers. So a lot of these are not urgent, or these are urgent matters, but they're not necessarily important at the top of the list and priorities. Now, if you're on a team, then a lot of these things can be delegated off your plate so that you have more time to work on that upper right quadrant. If you're not on a team, these are still activities that you should start implementing in your business as you're able to so that you have more time to work on those top right quadrants. So maybe you're hiring a sign guy. Maybe you're bringing on a transaction coordinator. Maybe you're bringing on a marketing assistant or tapping into EXP Realty's marketplace where they do your signs for you and you just have to put in a couple of things in there and you're not spending hours in Canva trying to redesign a perfect flyer. Little things that you can delegate either with AI or with systems that we already have in place or with your team to help you remove this off your plate. And then what are we deleting off our list? Ultimately, mindless social media scrolling. So we're just scrolling through the timeline. That's 10, 15, 20 minutes, 45 minutes of your day right there. Netflix, how many Netflix shows did you watch this week? How much time could you have had back on your calendar uh, from just watching shows? And then unnecessary meetings, showing up to a meeting just to show up to a meeting. A lot of times, um, what I've been trying to focus on now is what is the outcome of this meeting? What are we doing? What are we What are we trying to uh, to what are we trying to, to provide to get us closer to our goals in this meeting? Or am I just showing up to an hour meeting to be here? Right. What are your thoughts, Shannon? We'll take it to the next slide. Yeah, that's exactly right. Is, you know, pick and choose what you want and, and what can you take out of your day that really doesn't matter? TV. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't like to sit and veg on the couch for a little while but that's you know has its time and its place but take that out and fill it with something else um that's a huge part love it love it so you guys tip number four the rockwell technique um you can take it to the next slide jeff the rockwell technique is what i coined he said he learned it from someone else but the rockwell technique is if something takes you two minutes get it off your plate as fast as possible so if it's a two minute activity, stop putting those on your to do to do list. If it's a quick call or a quick text or a quick post or a quick email or uh, anything that is going to take you two minutes or less, get it done. Because those are the ones that we put off and we put off and we put off and we put off. And then it's Friday. And instead of going into our weekend with uh, uh, more time freedom, now we're trying to play catch up or we put it off all weekend. And now Mondays are chaotic. So the Rockwell technique is if it takes two minutes or less get it done. No excuses. Yep. So leverage your brokerage or team. If you are, uh, you are not the best at everything in the world and you should not aim to be this saying really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I love to help people. I love to uh, be everything to everyone. And I'm slowly learning with maturity <laughs> that I cannot be everything in the world to everyone and I shouldn't aim to be, right? So instead, if we create a business as seats on the bus, everybody has a role, or as a business, as a machine, we're a cog, everything has its purpose, 
then we're able to leverage and get more of our time back. So when someone asks me about social media, instead of me going to learn about social media and how to grow business on social media, I'm just going to point to the master resource. Let me help you find the master resource that can help you be that instead of me taking eight hours to go try to learn it and then give them a diluted version of what they're looking for. Right? How many of you get asked questions about uh, a file? I know there's a lot of, yeah, you're the cheerleader. That's right. So good, good looking cheerleader too. <laughs> that I am. So how many of you guys, here's another one that you can get quickly off of your table. I know there's a lot of leaders in this room, in this business, in this, in this uh, Zoom that we're in. How many of you get uh, questions about contracts? Raise your hand. That's right. A lot of you guys, right? If you're growing and you have a lot of new agents on your team, how many of you want to answer every single one of those calls every time that you get a call about a contract? Sometimes you're like, oh man, I know I need to answer this call. It's important. I got to <laughs> give them an answer. You guys know that. And this has nothing to do with EXP Realty. It's just that it has we have that benefit. Do you know that we have a contract compliance team and a brokerage operation team? And do you know how easy it is to access the world here in EXP where all of our agents can pop in there and talk with a broker and a contract compliance team instantly? That's pointing to the resource, but we got to slow down and speed up, right? So instead of answering all the questions for everybody every single time, Jeff highlighted there, point to the resource, point to the resource, point to the resource, point to the resource. Now you're creating a cascading leadership for your own team as well. So when they have agents join or they want to build teams, you're not the catch all for everything. You're going back to the resources that we have on hand. JJ, you know, one of my earliest business coaches said to me, if there's anything you've done more than twice, he said, capture it, turn it into a resource so that you can share the resource moving forward, right? If you're writing the same email again and again and again and again and again, get yeah. like streak and just have email templates or use the, use the version that's baked into Google or whatever you just have a template for that, right? If you're, if you find that you're explaining the same thing, create a quick video. And when somebody says, Hey, how's that work? Say, Hey, I've got a video on that and send them the video. In fact, put it on your YouTube yeah. channel. So you start getting view count. Now you're building your YouTube channel, right? Like there's always a hack. So you can be, if the resource doesn't exist, create it. There's a good chance the resource exists, right? That's what we're doing with the community. It's what you, it's what you have already at your fingertips. And so many times the temptation is to be like, but I'm adding value. If I spend the time, no, you're not. You're diminishing your personal value and you're definitely killing your income, which means your kids, your spouse, those are the people that are suffering as a result of you trying to feel important instead of just doing good work. That's clean. That's right. And for people and that- you're not teaching those other agents how to think for themselves either. Absolutely. What, what, so a couple of different things to apply and be implemented into your business. If, if you're uh, selling real estate, which most of you hopefully are on this call, what are some things that come up all the time? Hey, where do I drop off the earnest money? That's saved on my phone as a, as a copy and paste. And all I got to do is copy it, paste it, and then change the dollar value on there. And even, and there's even furthermore, if you're an, uh, an iPhone user, Jeff has these short key phrases where you can type in uh, EA or EA drop off or whatever it is, right? And then when you type in those two letters, it copies and pastes all that for you already. So there's quicker time hacks, right? What are some systems that you can actually put a text replacement that you can just keep on a running notepad on your phone where you can just copy and paste that and throw that in there as a quick resource, right? How do I get pre-qualified? What are, what, are other, what are other questions that you feel that you answer every single day or at least on a weekly basis? Throw them in the chat bar or open up your mic. I saw some here come up. Uh, what's an appraisal? How much does it cost out of pocket typically? That's a, that's a pretty common one. Any other ones in there? When I type, oh, hold on. When I type HHH into my phone, it automatically says, hello, this is Joanne Graham from the G team at EXP Realty in Roseburg. And then I can add whatever it is. So if I'm texting a seller or a buyer or whoever I need to text, it just automatically comes in. I use that probably five times a day. I love that. Love that. I need to add that. Yeah. 
for showing me uh, too for showing requests right hey this is jj velador at the rockwell group exp realty can i show your new listing at and then all i have to do is type in the address we're working on that tomorrow jj all when right. i'm over in medford we're gonna get it done <laughs> you know i will yes. i'll tell you real quick i i use this all the time and i love this hack so much text replacements on all devices just so you guys know it's usually under your keyboard settings so go looking for it but it's so that you can type something small and it expands to something bigger i always use just the same digit a number of times so like three or four times nobody ever types h four times in a row. So if you have a bunch of hashtags you put on all your social media posts, do HHHH and put all your hashtags there. And now you never have to type that again. And I know that that seems like a little thing, but multiply that over a year times four posts a day or whatever you're doing. And you probably just saved yourself like multiple hours by programming yeah. that, which took 10 seconds. It's insane. Mm -hmm. How helpful this is and one other one um like uh every single time that i notice that i'm giving a response to somebody or that i'm prompting a response from somebody or even on lead generation behaviors where i'm repeating something i'm like i'm never going to do this again i don't want to type it again i just come up with the very best version so i don't by the way also this will make you consistent in your approach which is beautiful right because how many times you're like well how did i, I did that perfectly last time how did i do it then don't do that to yourself anymore. Just turn it into a system. This is a system and a process and then duplicate moving forward. It's, it's totally baller. I love this. Heck yes. Yeah. So that's a huge, it looks like people are already communicating in the chat bar about getting that set up. So, you know, we, we got a little bit more value out of the call. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Uh, last slide here. I know Shannon's going to love this last slide. I'll let her cap off the presentation. Then we'll open it up for a quick Q and A if you need to, or uh, if you want to, uh, you know, add, add more to the conversation. Obviously we'd love to hear that, but this is how I cap off time management. Shannon, go ahead and talk about it. Learning to say no. Learning to say no. Uh, took me a long time to learn. So I, I don't exactly know what you want me to say, but um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. No. It's okay to say no. Uh, I listen to my gut a lot. Um, whether it's clients or, you know, I just, I just listen to my gut and it, it's don't, don't, so it's business. Don't take everything personal. And I mean, I don't know, I don't know where to go with this. So you, you kind of maybe need to take over because you're much more structured than I am with this. Me, I just kind of run with things and, and go with what works, but um, yeah, no, you're you're good, I, you're good, and and you know what, no is a full sentence. I've, I've heard people yeah. talk about before, like no is a full sentence. You're not having to give all the full explanations, but I have uh, Joanne yeah. here um, who has probably learned how to say no as well. If you can open up your mic, you gave an excellent, uh, uh, you gave an excellent answer there in the chat bar. Are you talking to me? I, that's an that's an honest question. I just went to one yesterday and it's like, I want to be available to help her, but I do not want this listing. So I'm trying to figure out how to tell her I really don't want to be helpful. And I hope <laughs> you can find somebody that does want to be helpful. Oh, that's a question. Yeah, you know, I mean, I just do not want this listing, although I would love for her to be able to get it sold. She needs to get out of here. But it's like, ugh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, you know, I I like uh, you. That, I love that <laughs> because I have I have one right now that that I have one right now that I'm like my gut told me not to do this and someone else told me to take it and I did and I'm kicking myself. Uh yeah, I love that that she's okay with not at least I know there's somebody else out there. <laughs> Yeah. See, my thing is I have to weigh out um I have to weigh out the time invested as well uh when I'm looking at things of that nature. Uh, oh, Mr. Jason Giles in the building himself. Oh, we're going to get you on stage absolutely... right now. We're going to oh. get you. But the thing is you guys with that there's really two three avenues, right? Time invested, time uh what what time invested you're going to have and and the outcome from that listing and also money and all that and and ultimately if if the job can get done um then you're also going into pivoting as as far as maybe 
uh, leveraging your time with uh, your experience and helping a new agent do the groundwork. So maybe there's a new agent in your marketplace, on your team, or in your organization that may be able to do a lot of the the uh, the just boots on the ground type of uh, um, work that it's going to take to invest into this listing and you just take a small referral fee from it or it may not even be worth the time on the referral and you just say hey you know I really appreciate you having me over and I run my business on a, on a fully transparent you know um, in a fully transparent manner and I don't think I'm the right person to uh, take on this listing to help you accomplish what you're looking to accomplish. And is the is the client like is the seller? Are they being reasonable with their expectations on their price? What they want for it? What you know are sometimes that's half the battle because if they aren't wanting to play, you know, if they aren't wanting to to kind of see what you're showing them on CMAs and stuff, and say, you know, this is not you're not going to be able to get that. I know that's what you want. But they have to have real, realistic expectations that we can actually achieve. If they are so unrealistic, we're just setting ourselves up for failure. That's right. That's right. Jason, what's on your mind? Buddy, I've been here the whole time. I just, you know, it took me an hour and 25 minutes to build up the courage to say something, you know, Amen. because I'm a pretty timid person. I However, saw you at six in the morning, I don't need to see you anymore on this call, right? Right, right. <laughs> Why do I not believe that? Hey, we get <laughs> long winded. Hey. We get long winded. We got about four minutes. So ready. give me the well, snapshot. Lightning this, in the is, this is this is core 220 today. All right, get ready. So I wanted to uh, just throw, I mean, there's some ahas I got from this. Shannon, when you were talking about sitting down at the table with no phone, you know, I just thought to myself, what, how much time did we have before we even had that? I don't even want to say um, that, uh, that tool to use. It's really sometimes an inconvenience. You know, mm -hmm. what did we do before that tool was there, right? What did we do before that inconvenience was there? And then, you know, just thinking to myself, how much time has been wasted on meaningless things that I could have, you know, the reality is, is if I did what we, what we really are setting to do in our business, I'll have all the time I want in five years to scroll my phone all day long. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so stop doing it now. And then when we talk about the, you know, saying no to people, what, what another aha for me is to start writing down when I say no, what it is that I'm saying yes to, right? Make a list of that. And when I'm saying yes, what am I saying no to? So I for like an example, that. for an example, when you're talking about not wanting to take a listing, Joanne, you said, help me. Um, I'll do my best. This is just my thoughts, right? But I'm, I'm here to do what I can. I, rem I, I can think back to things that I did for, for listings that I'm like, I'm not a painter. I'm not a landscaper. I'm not, you know, whatever, right? So if, if we have to say, if we're going to say yes to somebody that we feel is going to be a difficult client, before we do that, let's make sure we know what we're saying no to. And if those things are acceptable, then go ahead and say yes. But if those things are not acceptable, then say no. So do that in reverse. If you know you have to say no, what is it that you're saying yes to with this potential difficult client? Is it somebody that you would take on if you had six other listings right now that are about to close, right? Because what I found is that when we take these kind of clients on, that could be difficult in some way. And I had one on the phone yesterday that was just, I let him know at the end of the phone call, sir, I apologize. I called to see if you want to relist your home. Unfortunately, I realized in this phone call that um, you are not a client that that would be best suited for me to work for. And I let him know that even if he would have said, yes, come to my house. But you know, when you, when you're doing this, I kind of lost track, but when you're doing this, just, just think to yourself, whatever I'm saying no to, am I okay with what I'm going to say yes to? So, I mean, there's a lot of ahas on this. Oh, that's what I was getting to. These things right here, if we take on a client like this, we have to realize how much time we're losing that we could have been spending really building our business by taking on this one client. Is that six hundred thousand dollar listing worth the potential other three clients that we put a, could have picked up that appreciate what we do? And you'll find, and I'm starting to be more assertive with this. When you are um, the professional and you learn how to say no, more people respect that, and then they want to adjust how they're being because they're like, "Wait, I want to work with somebody who said no to me because nobody has ever said no to me on what I was doing." So, Shannon, what do I need to do now? You just tell me, and I'll do it. Right? That could really shift that conversation. So. This is powerful because we all work on what we can do with our time. And, you know, there's some challenges here and I'm going to challenge myself. You guys take this for what it is. 
But start challenging yourself every time you start kind of scrolling on that phone. If it's after five o'clock, who cares? If it's the nine to five hour, which is like our work time, start writing down when you got on that, that scrolling. And when you got off of that scrolling, do that for a week and think to yourself, okay, how much time did I put into that? If that was four and a half hours, what could we have accomplished in that four and a half hours? I'm going to challenge myself to do that because it's something I found with distraction. So thank you both. This has been phenomenal. That's right. Yeah. And I'm out. Appreciate you, Jason. On the flip side of things, I, I want to add this in really, really, really fast. And then Shannon, thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate you for thank sharing you. what you're doing. Amazing agent. By the way, she's down in Southern Oregon, Klamath Falls, Oregon. For any referrals, Shannon, what's your phone number? 541-890-3941. That is your real estate gal for the Klamath Falls, Oregon market. Any referrals going down there? Please send them over to Shannon. She's a rock star agent. Jason, the last thing I'll tell you on that time management thing is that track your lead generation on a stopwatch. If you say you're going to lead generate for uh, 30 minutes, put it on a quick stopwatch. Every time you're not lead generating, stop it. And every time you're lead generating, start it. And if you say you're going to do that for a whole hour, do that start and stop technique. And you'll be surprised of actually how much work you're doing during that time. That's a Darren Hardy uh, 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 project that he did. He said he was working 10 hours a week, going crazy, just knocking on doors. And he would stop the watch when he's not talking to someone and start the watch when he's not talking about someone. And then he went at the end of the 10 hour day, being productive versus being busy at the end of the 10 hour day, he actually only worked 1.5 hours out of 10 hours. Crazy experiment, try it. Jeff, take us out. We appreciate everybody. We love you guys. Thanks you for joining the community Zoom again. Powerful hour and a half here with you guys. We appreciate your time and attention. Thanks, JJ and Shannon. That was awesome. Good job. Thank you, Thank you guys. Appreciate you all.